Of the many troubling things I've heard throughout 2020, one of the most dangerous in my mind is the idea that we hear coming from the left and coming from the mainstream media, although left and mainstream media are basically synonyms today, discussions that view property rights as some sort of lesser form of rights compared to our other liberties. You know, buildings can be rebuilt. Oh, so what? A warehouse was burned down. What they don't understand is that if you look and study, not American history per se, but Western history and concepts of rights and how they developed, in fact, property rights are the foundation for all those other liberties. They're not secondary to it, or certainly not tertiary to it. They are the foundations of our rights. Property rights are the foundations of our liberties. The relationship between property rights and the other rights and how they developed in the West is a very complex issue. I used to spend at least a third of a course talking about it when I used to teach about it. It's an intricate subject. It's a complex subject that how these rights evolved over, over centuries. What I thought I'd try to do in this video, because I don't have time to do that, is to try to give you a little snapshot, sort of a little microcosm of the relationships between these rights to try to make the point about how property rights are for foundations of our other liberties. Let's look at freedom of the press. Now, freedom of the press is a central liberty in the United States. It's a constitutional liberty. It's in the first of our amendments, what we call the Bill of Rights. Freedom of the press. But think about it for a second. You cannot have a free press unless you can own a press. It's a property right. The first, the fundamental right of the collection of rights that we would consider freedom of the press, freedom of speech, involves property. If you can't own a newspaper, if only the state can own newspapers, radio stations, television stations, social media outlets, there is no freedom of press. The state will control the press. That's the way it is. That's the way it is around the world. There, there's some, you know, fuzzy areas of the BBC, CBC, you know, National Public Radio. But even they would be at risk if the nature of those governments changed. And in most of the world, they are at risk. That's why a free press is so peculiar, is so rare in many parts of the world. That's why you don't see it all the time. But if you don't have the right to own a newspaper, there's no freedom of the press. If you don't have a right to own a broadcasting studio, there is no freedom of the press. There is no media freedom. Everything would be controlled by the state because the state would control and own everything. And that's what we have to realize. Underlying that, underlying freedom of the press, underlying, in many ways, freedom of speech, is a property right. The broader liberties developed after the establishment of property rights as Europe moved out of feudalism. That's the story of the rise of the West. And you have to understand that, that property rights aren't some sort of secondary or tertiary form of rights that came after the others. They're the ones that allowed the others to develop. Property rights came first. Take another example, freedom of religion. If you want to open a church, build a church somewhere, a mosque, a, a, a synagogue, a temple, the first thing you have to do is to be able to purchase the land to build the structure. If you can't do that and you can't exercise your freedom of religion, if you can't own the land that the church is on, if a government can tell you, no, well, you can't put a church there, you can't put a mosque over here, you can't do this here, you can't do that, 
you know, you have to lease, lease the church from us. You know, what kind of controls are you going to have from the government when you do that? Again, it rests on a property right. So if, if you look at these cases, you can see that property rights come first. They're the foundational rights on which the rest of our liberties rest. You can't get rid of property rights without jeopardizing all our other liberties. And when you see things about this great reset, and you see that moron, the German moron who says, you know, people are going to be living in 20 or 30 years, whatever it is, in a society where there's no property, you know, and everybody's going to be happy. If there's no property, there will be no free press. There will be no or limited free speech. I mean, you can speak freely, but what are you going to know to speak about? If you can't read anything other than what they want you to read. You get back to the Soviet Union where they're passing out, you know, Samzadot, little, little newsletters uh, published privately in the home. I mean, that's really scary when I heard that guy say that. I know the, the tapes, the video has been taken down and now it's classified as a conspiracy theory, but, you know, it was there on the website. I saw it several times. And he said, in the future, there will be no property and you will love it. You know, what that's telling me is that they're going to, you know, freedom of the press is gone. There's going to be no freedom of the press. There's going to be no freedom of religion. If a church can't control its own property, what's the point? This is getting dangerous. I mean, the left isn't just trying to destroy our institutions. They're trying to destroy freedoms and liberties and concepts that have developed over centuries. And they're so intertwined. They're so balanced. They're so interconnected. You can't start you know, chopping out parts of them without the whole thing coming unwound. And that's what they're doing. And that's not just what I'm, I think they're doing. They're telling us they want to do it. They told us over the summer that property rights don't matter. But they do matter. You get rid of property rights, all the other liberties are going to go with it. It's that simple. That's what I think. Let me know what you think in a comment. Like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you can. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.